Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Ladies of Summer 2020. My name is Paige Berger, and I'm the marketing manager here at Barrett Bookstore. And we are thrilled tonight to welcome Emma Straub and Jay Courtney Sullivan to our annual event. Now, when we started planning this event back in January, uh, we did not imagine we would not all be sitting together spilling our rosé. And even when things started to shut down a few months ago, we had our eye on this event and we thought, well, maybe with all the windows open, alas, was not meant to be, but we're so glad to see such a robust crowd here with us online and we're grateful for you spending time with us tonight. Before I go any further, I'm going to give you a few housekeeping notes and then we'll get on with the show. Um, Right below where you are watching in the live stream, um, there's a green box that will take you directly to our bookstore where you can purchase books. Although actually technical difficulties, I'm not seeing it on my screen. So we're gonna put it up during the conversation. And I'm sure once you hear Courtney and Emma talking about their books, you are definitely gonna wanna purchase them. So please support their work and uh, the work that our bookstore is doing and make sure you get those copies. We have plenty in stock. For those of you uh, for whom this is the first time on Crowdcast, this is a webinar platform. That means we can't see you, but you can still interact. Some of you have already found the chat on the right side of your screen. That is a public chat. We all can see you. You feel free to put comments in there. And then um, below this box here, there is um, something that says, ask a question. And in that box, you can start to put in questions for the Q&A that we will do after Emma and Courtney have their conversation. So feel free throughout while they're talking, if anything sparks your interest or there's anything that you want to ask them, you can start to put your questions there and we'll hop back on um, after their conversation and get those questions answered for you. It is now my pleasure to introduce Emma and Courtney. Emma Straub released her newest novel, All Adults Here in May. She is the New York Times bestselling author of three other novels, The Vacationers, Modern Lovers, Lara Lamont's Life in Pictures, and the short story collection, Other People We Married. Her books have been published in 20 countries. As if she's not busy enough, she and her husband own Books Are Magic, an independent bookstore in Brooklyn, New York, that has quickly become an industry leader among independent bookstores. And she is such a good friend to all of us indie booksellers around the nation. And we are grateful for the leadership and advocacy work she does on behalf of independent bookstores. We're very honored to have her here with us tonight. We also have J. Courtney Sullivan, and today is Courtney's publication date for Friends and Strangers. Courtney is the New York Times bestselling author of the novel Saints for All Occasions, The Engagements, Maine, and Commencement. She has contributed to the New York Times Book Review, the Chicago Tribune, New York Magazine, among many other publications. And she also lives in Brooklyn, New York. I'm now going to, by the magic of technology, bring them both to the front. And I'm going to uh, let them take the conversation <laughs> from here. Oh, no. Can you hear me, Courtney? Oh. Okay. And so I'm seeing that Courtney can't hear anything. So, Courtney can't hear. No? Can't Can hear, hear anything. Hear? No. But Courtney can't hear. Uh-oh. Hmm. Uh-oh. Hey, okay, Courtney. Well, can you, you hear me? Yes. Yes. We can hear you. We can hear Courtney, but she can't hear us. So, I hear Paige through my phone right now. Oh, maybe you need to turn off your phone. Is that weird? Should we just no, do it I that way? Because um, our associates in the back. So first of all, everyone, welcome to the reality show that <laughs> is running an online event. <laughs> we did have a green moon test before, so we're going to figure out what's going on. Shall she log off? Okay, Courtney, I think perhaps you should um, log off. And I will invite you back on and let's see if we can get your microphone working. Shall we do that? Okay. Um, oh, hi, Emma. In the, meantime, in the meantime, I can tell everybody a hilarious story. Okay. Yeah. Because I feel like it might be pertinent. So a couple of weeks ago or whenever my book came out, who knows what time is anymore. I did an event with Judy Bloom at Books and Books in, in 
Key West. Florida, yeah. And um, <laughs> she, she couldn't hear, we couldn't hear. It was a whole disaster. And what we ended up doing, so first of all, she, she was listening with her phone and the computer. And so whenever she had her sound on, it sounded like, um, like a like a sonogram of a pregnant belly, kind of like, which is not what you want. And then <laughs> when, yeah. um, and there was like horrible like guitar amplifier feedback. All right, let's see it. Okay. Hello, Courtney Hi. Sullivan. Can you hear? I can hear you now. <laughs> I was, I was just telling everyone a horror story about me and Judy Bloom, Courtney. Do you want to hear the end of it? It was terrible. Of course. Of course. So, so it was all this horrible feedback. And she was she was saying such nice things. Oh my God. She was saying such nice things to me. Nobody could hear them. So oh. it's the worst thing that ever happened to me. Like Judy Bloom just gave me like a thousand compliments in a row, and I was the only one who got them. But oh. then the way that it ended up working working was that she was on the telephone with the person in the bookstore who was then acting as like a translator and repeating oh. questions it was i mean this is just to say page i'm glad you don't have to do that but like there's always a way there is I'm, always a way i'm so glad you have experience so now <laughs> i know we should actually always have emma on in addition to running a bookstore and writing books and you know screenwriting for your own books maybe tech support is like totally in your future for these virtual events oh, <laughs> i can't do tech support but i can do um uh, like filler filler gibberish Amazing. like i can just talk okay if, with if that when it's a full time i can just talk Nobody wants to hear me talk, so I'm going to go away and let you ladies have a fabulous conversation. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Okay, Courtney, I'm going to start. Hi, everybody. I'm so In sorry. In the meantime, I wrote down some questions. Okay, so Courtney. Oh, good. It took me so long to figure out this system that yeah, you wrote down questions. I wrote it down. Um, okay, Courtney, happy publication day. Cheers to you. I Thank love you. you. Thank you. I love you. Um, and you and I are now um, the sisterhood in the sisterhood of the traveling Jenna Bush Hager pants, I think. Uh, yes, um, those are amazing pants to be in. I'm so happy and in such good company. Such good pants. Such nice pants. Yes. Flattering on everyone. Um, totally. so in that way. Yeah. So ha, I mean, how do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel today, Courtney? How's today? How do I feel? I feel really good. Um, I was so happy to be chosen by Jenna. And as you know, you find out in advance and then you have to keep it a secret for a long time. And you know, keeping secrets is really not my forte. So I'm really glad that it's out now and I succeeded in keeping the secret. I kept thinking that somehow I would accidentally blurt it out on Twitter or something. I don't know how that would happen, but um, but I didn't. So that's good. Um, as I've already told you, Emma, uh, my lovely husband was like, we're going to have this celebration this morning. And he set up, you know, we're all going to sit together as a family and watch the announcement on TV. And the kids are going to be so impressed about mom's name being said on TV. And um, it's the second they said my name, all hell broke loose in our home. <laughs> and my, my three-year-old was throwing the most epic tantrum of his life, demanding that we put on Fireman Sam and turn off this show that we were watching. Yeah. Um, so that was just like how my life is these days. Yeah. And, um, I mean yeah, I just, you were you trying. Know, to I just got a review. For as I was coming here. I got a review from Ron Charles in the Washington Post that made me so happy. And as a writer, as you know, reviews are very subjective. Some of them make you want to just, you know, go with your backup career. Mine is travel agent or private <laughs> detective. What's yours? Um. Well, I already own a bookstore. Does that count? No, 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 no. You have but to I'm, give that up as well. Back up. Well, okay. Actually, no, I guess that doesn't count. Um, I mean, it's a lot of work. 
So yeah. I could definitely find something that was less work for yeah. a backup backup. Well, if you I'm going to be a private detective, I think travel agent will be my cover. So maybe bookstore could be okay. your cover if you're doing okay. the agency. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, it's not going to be um, elementary school teacher because I tried that out this for the last few months and yeah. I was not very good at it. I was not very good at yeah. that. So I'm not going to do that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I was talking to my mom. I don't know if my mom is here, but I was talking to my mom about um, being a drug dealer. Oh, like like a like a legal like a legal a legal drug dealer. But I oh, don't think uh, yeah. that work either. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm not. No, good. I almost wonder if you could do my that. mom said oh, yes. There's your mom. My mom. My mom says, "Oh yes." So now, would okay. this be like a mother daughter business, or <laughs> would it just be <laughs> you? I don't know, mom. I mean, my mom really, and I mean, this is this has everything to do with you know white privilege and being a white woman in the world. Mm -hmm. But I have long said that, you know, my mother and I could, could really get away with nearly any crime. Um, yeah. So maybe we should turn to a life of crime. I'm going to do that, Courtney. Yeah. yeah. Crime, you know, crime. I this past year had a, had a bank teller say to me, well, she gave me $10,000 without any ID. And she said, you know, you just have such an honest face. <laughs> And it really made me, it really made me think I could be a criminal, you know, I sh yeah. maybe should be. But anyway, yeah. should we talk about writing and books? Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Should we? Fine. Sure. <laughs> if you want to. Um, okay. I have a real Are question. You? I have a question. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Um, so what book, when you were writing Friends and Strangers, which I know was you know, you, you've, you've had two babies in the last three years. So let's assume it wasn't easy, right. Um, to write yeah. this book, what yeah. book, what book were you trying to write? And then what book do you think you actually wrote? That's my, that's my question for you. Like, what was your goal? Yeah. And what do you think you did? I like that question. You know, when I was a kid, we had this, um, well, we had a, a painter, who, a distant relative who was a painter, Jack Murray. I'm sure you all know him. Not really. Um, and he, he had drawn this really majestic seascape that hung over our fireplace at home um, with a ship on the rolling waves and I used to sit down often with my box of Crayola crayons and I'd be like, I am going to draw that. And I would then attempt it, you know, start out with all the hope in my heart that it was going to basically look exactly like Jack Murray's. <laughs> and then of course it inevitably looked like a sailboat drawn with crayons and I would be very frustrated. Ugh. And writing a novel is kind of like that, you know, it where is. you start out, you have the vision. Um, that's why the beginning is always like heaven because it's like you're just like oh this is nothing but possibility this is great and then you know reality sets in so what did i start out to write though so i think i did with this book i think i came pretty close to writing what i was trying to write um it was a book that my last book really was a struggle you know i i threw away hundreds of pages and started again i really didn't know even what i was writing until um i'd written those hundreds of pages that had to be thrown away and so um you know i this book i kind of from the outset it just kind of flowed more easily than the others have and i think that's probably because it, it did hew so much more closely to my own experience, um, especially as compared to the last one, which was about, you know, an octogenarian uh, mother of four and a nun. Um, this one was slightly closer to my own experiences. Um, but, you know, certainly there are always parts that are, that are trickier than others. Um, but I did see, you know, I started out wanting to write this book that was 
uh, about two women, um, a new mother who's just had her first baby and her college age babysitter and the relationship that they uh, have over the course of a year of working together, uh, very much crossing boundaries into sort of a friendship, but can it really ever be a friendship when one person works for the other person? Um, and I knew from the outset that I really wanted it to be a book about class, among a lot of other things. Um, you know, I wanted it to be about friendship. I wanted it to be about uh, the fact that some friendships endure over lifetimes or, you know, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and other friendships just kind of happen and are very intense and might change your life, but they only last six months or a year or whatever it might be. Um, so I wanted to look at that. I also just really wanted to look at class and the idea of um, this kind of middle class girl who's working in the home of a very wealthy woman um, and kind of using her. I don't know. Were you a babysitter? No. When you were young, did you babysit? I read yeah, the there's like two, club. Yeah. I read the there's like club. two categories, like, you know, of young women in that sense that I think those who read the babysitters club either came away from it as we both did, of course, either <laughs> came away from it feeling like I'm interested in this idea of like entrepreneurship and, you know, making money and having a club. And then some took it very literally. And I was one of those, like, <laughs> I want to babysit. It's the most glamorous thing in the world. So, you know, I did start babysitting at a really young age and I, I babysat all through college and even in my early twenties and I was a nanny. Um, and, you know, I think each time you meet a, a new family to some degree or another, as, as a very young woman, really still a girl, you're kind of looking at the mother as just another example of womanhood and like, well, what parts of her do I want to be when I grow up? Um, yeah. So I wanted to look at all that, too. And I think uh, getting well, this gets into a question I want to ask you, actually, but, you know, I I think for fiction writers in the time of Trump and all the other craziness that has happened in the last couple of years, few years, it's been um, it's been a weird time to write fiction because you kind of have to like choose the lane. You kind of have to choose: Do I just write about this? Do I write about what's happening as it's yeah. happening? But that's really hard because it's like such sort of shifting sands beneath our feet. Or do you um, write about, um, you know, what's happening, but through the lens of 200 years ago or something? Or do you just pretend this isn't happening at all? Um, mm -hmm. And I think, you know, in my case, what I ended up doing was kind of writing a book that, and this was maybe the part that surprised me and was different at the end than what I had intended to, going back to your original question, um, that the book I ended up writing was very much like, uh, you know, what got us here, I guess, mm -hmm. if that, that makes sense. Yeah. So what about you? What about you starting out and finishing? Um, well, yeah, I mean, I think that like, you know, what you're, what, <laughs> what you're describing, I certainly was thinking about too. Like, you know, the world feels so different, felt so different. <clears throat> excuse me, um, while writing than, than my last did for so many reasons, you know, I mean, you know, like you, I had, well, I had one child when I wrote my last book. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. I had, yeah, no, I had one while I was writing it. Yeah. And then yeah. I gave birth like three months before my last book, Modern Lovers, came out. Um, but, you know, and then Donald Trump and, and then we opened a bookstore and I mean, yeah, it, it, the, the, the question, like there was so much that was different and it is, it, it's always a question like, you know, what do you tackle head on? What do you, like, I guess in my life, I always feel like I need a little distance from something before I like really... Yeah synthesize it and process it enough to even think about writing about it. But with, yeah. with 
with the political landscape, I guess I like I I mean, he's in there kind of, you know, like he's mm -hmm. specter of him is there. Um, yes. even though I don't spend too much time talking about him directly, but I do think that it's so much influenced the way that I was thinking at the time that it that it that it really permeated the book more than I thought it would. Um Yes, I guess, yes. Yeah, I guess that's how I would answer my own question that like I wanted to write something like su just super fun and hopefully mm -hmm. all there is fun and I think it is. Um and it and it has a happy ending and like you know there's a wedding and <laughs> like there yeah. are all these things that that are totally optimistic. Um but yeah. the actual like meat of the book is a little bit darker than I than I anticipated. I think just because I I was thinking about dark things and um, yeah, I mean, it just like this conversation really just makes me wonder about what we're all gonna do now. You know, know. like like Zadie, Zadie Smith had. I don't know if you know this, Courtney. Zadie Smith has a um, a collection of essays coming out. Mm -hmm. in July, in July, that she wrote during the, the first weeks slash month of the pandemic. Oh my, okay. She just went, wow. Just went straight for it. Because That's I think that's what you can do when you have Zadie Smith's brain inside your head. But yeah. like for me, I don't know. I, I just like, I don't know. I think not knowing how this goes yeah. is paralyzing in terms of how I'll address it in fiction going forward. I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting because I feel like, you know, I feel like YA authors often have their finger on the pulse and they're very, you know, they they some they kind of know something or are willing to sort of address something about like um social justice and all kinds of things in a way that that adults, you know, adult fiction authors maybe are later to come to the table or something they're just they're just sort of always like you know kind of ahead of the curve as i guess young adults are too yeah. and um yeah. uh, i've noticed like talking to some friends who write ya that they are already kind of like figuring out how are they going to work the pandemic into their work into their novels mm -hmm. and what will they call it and will they call it COVID or will they fictionalize it Whereas yeah. I think those of us who write fiction for adults are like, so how do we just pretend that never happened kind yeah. of thing? You know? Or like, how do you, yeah. I mean, I think how do you, how do you end up in 20, you know, 2023 to 2030, not have every book be about this. But I, th you know, I think it's going to be like, you know, like in the years after 9-11, you know, there were so many books that 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 approached that from different events, from different, that event from different angles and different ways. Um, yes. You know, I think that's that's what's going to happen and it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. But yeah, yikes. Luckily, we yeah. have very small children and so I'm not writing anything. Are you writing anything, Courtney? No, no, ma'am, I am not. I am not. Making Maybe so someday crazy. soon. Um, yeah. You know, my my husband and I. Um, so yesterday, I was speaking of technical difficulties. Supposed to be doing an interview with NPR, and my Wi-Fi just completely ceased to exist. That was Aww. horrifying. Aww. So, in order to do my launch at Books or Magic last night, I was like, "Well, I don't want that to happen again in the middle of my book launch." So I, I got a room at the Hilton Garden Inn, and then it was so amazing. I was only there for two hours, so I'm there again. I'm there right now. And then oh my, my husband God. came and worked here today while I had the kids. And oh now God. I feel like we're, like, each having an affair, but just by ourselves. <laughs> it's like being alone, the magic of being alone, which we haven't That's had for many months now. And as a writer, you really need that. So dreamy. That sounds that so is. to me. My, my version of that is that on Saturday mornings, I go to my bookstore alone. Oh, that's nice. And I have some time there by myself. But I like but that. Yeah, it, alone time is truly precious. Truly. It is. 
So I had a question about your books because I was thinking about, um, I think I actually, this is something we have in common, but reading your books, um, I'm thinking especially the last three, um, they have, they all have a really, you know, large and colorful and amazing cast of characters. And then you, you tell the story from all of their viewpoints, from multiple points of view. And I always tend to do that too. Um, thinking, you know, next time I'm really going to write a book from just one point of view and then I <laughs> don't for whatever reason. So I wanted to know, like, what do you think it is about you that draws you to that particular way of telling a story? Yeah. And what are the benefits to doing it that way? Yeah. And do you like to read books like that? Yes, I do. I love to read books like that. And I, I mean, I think that, yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons that I love your books too, Courtney. And I think that like, it is every time I do exactly what you just said, where every time I think to myself, oh, no, no, this time, maybe two yep. people, not one. Yep. I mean, come on. Yep. What am I? What am I? Um, but I, <laughs> but it never lasts. I just, I just can't yes. help it. I can't help it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, with Laura Lamont, I, I, you know, it was much more her story, her yes, book. Yes, yeah. And I love that book too. So you can do, you know, you can do both. I, I don't think I could do it that way. I don't know. It sounds know. It so much, it seems so much harder to me. It seems so much, hard. I guess it seems harder to write the kinds of books that I feel like I'm... I'm here to write. Oh, somebody's dying to hear more from Courtney. Okay. Um, I, you know, I feel like it's, it's, it's hard. Um, yeah, it's hard to do that because I, because I'm, when I write, I find that like, I'm just interested in all the other people. And when someone saunters in and you think, oh, well, well, they seem interesting. Maybe I should follow mm -hmm. them. Head. Yeah. You know, I can't, I can't, um, I sort of can't resist. Like, I feel like you need, I don't know, a different concept, like, so, like, yeah. like so, so, something sort of more high concept, um, mm -hmm. which I don't, which I don't do. Like, I don't, I mean, I, I, I'm always impressed when people have um, really high concept books, but, but my concept is always um, relationships and families and misunderstandings. Yeah. Things and like, I mean, just because that's that's what I find interesting, isn't that? Is that what yeah. drives you to do that too, Courtney? I think so, and I think you know, I think um, you know, I come from a very big family where people are always talking about one another, not necessarily in a bad way, but just you know family members telling stories and, and everyone has a different, slightly different or sometimes radically different version of the same story. And I'm very interested in how like a group of people, be they family or friends or whatever, or even strangers can, um, friends and strangers can um, experience one event in totally different ways and, and have it shape them in totally different ways as well. So yeah. I think the best way of getting to the root of that um is multiple narrators and then also just the idea of um you know secrets i love writing about secrets that's the most fun ever and i think you know so somebody was saying to me recently that um you know as a writer i think like one of the best parts is that you're kind of a, a snoop you get to sort of snoop into peer into lives that you would otherwise not get to peer into even if they are made up lives and yeah. um and there's something about babysitting, you know, going back to the theme of this book where you're doing that all the time, you're sort of spying and, and collecting um, information. And so I think uh, sometimes, especially, you know, when it comes to secrets, uh, you might have a piece of the information, a piece of the story, but it really takes multiple people telling the story to, for you, the reader, to understand the whole thing. And I like that kind of part of it as well. I mean, yeah. your book is so fabulous on that the idea of the way this woman raises her children and how she thinks certain things affected them and she feels later you know how it has all reverberated 
And in some cases they feel totally differently about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because I think, I mean, you know, I don't know. My, my kids are four and six now. And already I feel like I've made mistakes that mm -hmm. I wish I could go back to the beginning and fix. Um, mm -hmm. But of course, if I went back to the beginning and made, I would just make different mistakes, you know, like I would, I, it's not like you would go back and make no mistakes. Um, right. Yeah. And that, that is, that is interesting to me. Um, especially mm -hmm. because, you know, as, when I was writing, I didn't really know what they were, you know, I mean, <laughs> I know what my mistakes are. <laughs> At least some of them, but but I didn't know what the <laughs> mistakes were. You know, like I'm not. I do outline, um, but this book took me so long. I mean, I know it's it's only been four years since since my last book, but that's twice as long as in between my all my others, and and it just my life changed so totally during the writing of yeah. this book that I. It was it was a much 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 harder book to write, and the editing took three times as long. Um, and it was just like a it was much more arduous. And I think that that whole process made it so that like my understanding of the characters changed over and over again. And my understanding of what the book was about changed over and over again. You know, I think that with my, with yeah. my previous books, I, I mean, with the vacationers, actually, I wrote it and I wrote, I spent years writing drafts of a book about the same characters, but, but in New York city, at, a, at an anniversary party. And I mean, I wrote so many drafts that my agent at the time, after a whole year of revising it with me, broke up with me in a voicemail and said, I just can't read this again. What? Good luck. And I was like, mm, well. Um, <laughs> no. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> but... But then when I actually figured out that what I needed to do, what made sense was to like, you know, sort of pick up this family and plop them down somewhere else so that they were sort of imprisoned together, quarantined, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, yes. I, I knew them all so well that I wrote, mm -hmm. that I wrote it so fast and it was clean as, anything. I mean, it was, I don't think I would ever write a book that clean again. Like I just, like I had it, like I had the whole thing. And once I, once it, once it clicked in my mind, how, like what needed to happen, then it was easy. But this book, yeah, this book was more work than that. <laughs> well, it's, you know, it's funny because I think if you're writing uh, if there are any writers listening right now and, and um, you know, struggling with a first book, I guess it's sort of helpful and not helpful to say that, you know, each book really feels like its own uh, journey. So, you know, it's, it, you, it feels hard every time. It feels like, at least to me, I, I want it to feel like, oh, God, I can't possibly write this. Even though I've written, you know, four books or five books before this one, this is the one that is going to do me and I can't, you know, and if I don't feel that way at the outset, feel terrified, then I don't think it makes for a really good book somehow. But, um, you know, I think I, I would have thought when I was working on my first novel that it just gets easier and easier, but it yeah. doesn't. It's each it's one you true. have to get a new toolkit almost. Yeah. I think the only thing that gets easier after you do it the first time is that you know it's possible. Like I think that when people are writing their first novels, whether those novels are novels it, that end up at the bottom of a drawer or novels that end up on the bestseller list, what mm -hmm. it accomplishes, the most important thing that it accomplishes is the same, which is just like a, yeah. like 
like a little button that it pushes in your brain that makes you know for sure that you can do it. And that if you can do it totally. once, you can do it again. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Oh my God, wait, Don't you think other? that's one of the better things about getting just being older too? getting older in general? It's like you have a yeah. sort of freak out about anything and you think to yourself, OK, but I've had this freak out before and I and I seem to still be here. So it must be OK. I feel like that's sort yeah. of a. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. wondering, too, I was thinking about your books and how the last three, they all have a teen ish girl, like adolescent slash teen ish girl. And I was just thinking about how you used to write for Rookie and how, you know, you seem very connected to that age. And, it, and it's a tough age to be connected to. I don't know that I could actually write from the point of view of someone at that age, because I don't think I really loved being that age. So what draws you to that um, age? And why are you so good at it? I don't know if I'm good at it. I, I mean, I'm getting worse, I think, as I get older, as one must, you know. Um, but, I, you know, I think so. So Courtney mentioned this this place. So I do. I, do, I love teenage girls and I always have teenage girls in my books. Um, but this when I wrote for Rookie, which was this online magazine edited by Tavi Gevinson, who was then a teenager, um, I, I, I wrote for them from, I don't know, maybe 2008 or maybe they started in 2009. It started around then. I think, I think I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but it, but it was, they, I think she did it for like seven years. Um, and I did, I, I hardly ever wrote for them toward the end, but, but I, but I wrote for them a lot in the beginning. And it was so much fun. It was so much fun, not only because I got to write about whatever I wanted to write about, you know, in terms of what I remembered from being a teenage girl or from what I like wanted teenage girls to know. Um, mm -hmm. What was great about it was that it, it, it attached me to all these amazing writers who were 10 years younger than I was. Than I am, mm. and I don't know. And what's great is that I just turned forty, and they're all like, you know, on the cusp of thirty or in their twenties, in their mid twenties, some of them. And I just love it. I love getting to watch these young women, young people. They're not all women, um, but th these young, these young writers and photographers and stylists, like all these people who were really kids when I met them yeah. turn into yeah. girls. Um, and it just, it was amazing. I mean, you know, I don't like Facebook. I'm really never on Facebook, but when, when I was writing for Rookie a lot, the one place that I loved on Facebook was our staff Facebook group. And it was mm -hmm. like, you know, so there, there would be like, you know, a 17 year old girl who wrote for the website who had just, fallen in love for the first time or who had just gotten dumped for the first time or who just lost her virginity or something like that. And it was like, oh my God, I get to be a part of this. I get to be a part of this conversation with these people. It, I felt like, like this much like an old creep and this excited about it, you know? So like the, <laughs> with the creepiness. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just, I, I, huh. I, you know, I think that, that we all have periods in our lives that we feel, um, I don't know, it's sort of uh, like, like, like we can tap into that energy quickly, you know, like, totally. like I feel like, I mean, this might be totally wrong, but I feel like young, young journalist, Courtney, is still really like, like I feel like that, that in, in my imagination at least, young journalist Courtney is, is, is <laughs> you know? And I feel like preteen Emma is, mm -hmm. is powerful in the same way. Not as smart. That's true. Or as well, interesting, I but. I feel like I 
my natural gravitation is toward like 80 year old women it seems like that's <laughs> that's my sweet spot for characters um they're really interesting I, I mean, weirdly but you know in, yes in this book i think the maximum age of a character a main character is not even 40 so it's that's a stretch for me i'm used to writing <laughs> older ladies um but I, I feel the same way. And I think actually this book, Friends and Strangers, is um, also tapping into what you're talking about. Like to me, I, I remember being the very sort of eager early 20 something, um, just connecting with older women and and being fascinated by them. You know, when I was an assistant at Allure magazine, the women, they were all about 35 and they were all like senior editor. That was their title. I just couldn't believe that somebody had excelled to that level in a career. And I also kind of couldn't believe they were 35. I thought that was so shockingly old. Yeah. Um, I would think, well, I'm a meager assistant, but at least I'm not 35. Dear yeah. God. You know? yeah. So um, sort of, you know, looking in the other direction, um, and taking young women out for dinner or for coffee and talking to them about their careers. I love doing it. You know, it's amazing. Yeah. And it, in a way it kind of, um, I think this is something that comes out in the character Elizabeth in my book. And it's very much true, you know, that hopefully you're doing something for this young woman, but also you never really feel accomplished until you sit down and explain to someone 10 years younger, you know, how you've gotten where you've gotten. And then you think, Oh, I have actually done a thing or two with my life. Yeah. That's good. Um, I remember it's so funny. I, uh, I took a young woman out for dinner. We went to coffee shop in union square and this was maybe five years ago. And she said, um, you know, everyone who works here, all the waitresses, they're all models. And I said, yeah, I know. It's, it's like it's always been like that ever since I was just out of college. And she's like, oh, my God, this place was here when you were just out of college. And I was like, yes, 400 oh, years ago. The oldest restaurant in the world. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, oh wait, wait, Courtney, there are, there are some questions down here. I'm going to zip in. So, OK. Oh, I do see them. I, OK, I want to say oh, I one of these questions, I believe, is from your father. Am I right? Oh, yes. Okay, the reason that I know that, okay, Eugene, <laughs> Eugene Sullivan, I'm gonna say something about you now. Eugene Sullivan sent a very sweet email to the staff at Books or Magic saying how a nice your event was the other night. And Eugene, Aww. we all thank you very much. It's That's very, very, very nice sweet. Thing, Dad. So we know that Courtney's dad is here and my mom are here, so, that's where we are in, that's where we are, everybody. So if you want to- We're hiding, hiding from our children and our parents are at our event. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so what, which, do you want to, Courtney, do you want to answer your dad's question? I think you should. Which character in your book do you, which, which with which character in your book do you most identify? I, um, you know what? I've described this book in some ways as a conversation with my younger self. So I think Sam, the babysitter, um, Hugh's closest to me at that age, um, and me as a person in general. But but as you've said, I've had two babies in the time that I've been um, that I spent writing this book. Two babies in two years, sixteen months apart, and so the all of the sort of observations, the the funny, the weird, the you know, difficult, whatever of early parenthood certainly made their way into this <laughs> book. And I guess in some ways it's like probably the most unfiltered that I've written because the experience was actually happening as I was writing it, yeah. as opposed to sort of looking back on something. Yeah. Um, so I would say there's sort of part of me in both Elizabeth and Sam. I mean, Elizabeth and I are not, we don't have that much in common, um, except that, uh, the, the mom stuff is very real. Um, and, you know, Elizabeth's father-in-law, George, I said this last night at the Books Are Magic event that one of my friends read the book and said, oh my God, you're George, which I kind of <laughs> loved. Cause like, you know, of course everyone's gonna think, oh, which one of these two women is Courtney? But, yeah. you know, George is this kind of social justice minded man who's very, um, 
he's very interested in and obsessed with kind of the, the plight of America. And um, certainly a lot of George's thoughts are my thoughts too. I would like to extend my dad's question to you, Emma. Which of your characters, do you identify with any of these characters? Oh my do you feel goodness. that any of them are closest to you? Um, well, I guess, I mean, so, so all adults here is, is it's, it's, it's about three generations in a family. There's a 68 year old grandmother, like a, you know, adult children between 35 and, you know, early forties. And then there are a couple of 13 year olds down, down there at the bottom. Um, and so, I mean, I guess, you know, the 37 year old woman is pregnant in the book. And so I, it was the first time since having children, since being pregnant that I'd written about that. So that did feel like me. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, I feel like the, the, the really, the, the really fun part of writing fiction that is, you know, in the same realm as your own life, um, is that you get to be all of them, right? I mean, like I'm, 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 all, I'm all of them. Um, yes. And that's, you know, I think sometimes people miss that. But of course, you're George. You know what I mean? Like, of course, it all has to come from right, right? And exactly. you know, we all write about the things that we think about because, like, where yeah. else would it come from? Otherwise, it would be such a just a horrible chore and like a weird exercise, like homework exercise, you know? Um, right. So, so all of them, Eugene. That's my answer. Okay. And Emma, does being a bookseller change the way you write? From Sharon Nagel. Hi, Sharon. Um, Sharon knows from bookselling and libraries. Um, so. Hmm. You know, I, I, I thought that it might, like, I guess if I'm being honest, I thought that like opening the bookstore might scare me off a little bit or like make me feel, cause I do all the buying for the store. So like all the adult buying. So, so I am literally seeing every book. <laughs> Choosing every book that we bring in for front list, and and I can imagine that feeling overwhelming. And I mean, sometimes it feels overwhelming. Um, you do do great work supporting immigrant families together. Um, but I thanks, Lori. <laughs> um, but I feel inspired more than anything else. You know, like I think that the great thing about having the bookstore is that I just read more. I, I, I don't read as fast as I would like, but, but I just, I, I start more books and I'm, and I am more engaged with what's being published. Um, and, and I find that inspiring and exciting. So, so I mean, the, the way that being a bookseller has affected my writing is that it has made it slower <laughs> and harder, um, <laughs> you know, in terms of the logistics. But in terms of like how I feel about it, it's, it's exciting. Oh God. Oh wait, there's another Emma. A few specific ways that all adults here changed during revisions from early graphs. Oh my God, there are so many. Um, okay. Yes. Uh, I love this question. I cannot wait to hear the answer. One. This um, but I'm just going to be on it. Um, okay. So, so my, my, in my initial, this actually goes back to your, one of your questions, Courtney. So, um, in my initial, my initial plan for the book was that it was just these three characters that it was Astrid, who's the grandmother Porter, who's 37 and pregnant and Cecilia, who's a 13 year old kid. And it was just supposed to be them, <laughs> mm -hmm. but then it didn't work. It didn't work. Um, it just, people kept showing up and, and then I sort of expanded it to be like, just like all the women in the town. So like uh -huh. I, and I wrote so much like the, the birdie who is, who is Astrid's girlfriend, who's the hairdresser in the town. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there's like a 30 page birdie in her twenties 
in Texas chapter. There's like, oh, wow. I want to read that. <sighs> yeah. I mean, there's so much. Um, but then it was like too, that was, it was too much. And then, and then it seemed weird that I was leaving out the men in the family. Um, so I had to sort of bring them in. Um, yeah. And then, I mean, and then there were smaller things. Like there was one thing, one, one, I mean, this is sort of a spoiler, but, um, there is, there's a character in the book who is a trans girl who is in the eighth grade. And mm -hmm. there's a chapter that's from her point of view that I wrote in the first person because I, I don't know. It just seemed like it seemed important to me. It was important mm -hmm. to me that she tell her own story, but, mm -hmm. but then I went, my editor and I talked about it so much. We talked about that chapter really more than any other individual chapter in the book. Um, and I ended up shifting it into the third person, um, which I, which I like now. And I don't think it loses what it had, but like, um, you know, I mean, there are, there are, there are huge things and, and tiny things like that, 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 um, that get changed and changed back and changed and changed back over the course of, of writing. You know, I, I have, I have long strived to be one of those writers who like, you know, takes out and puts back in the same three commas and that's how, you know, you're done. Um, <laughs> but, but I guess that chapter was my version of that. Yeah. It's weird because when you're writing, it's like the difference between write, I guess this is the difference between just writing and publishing is that, yeah. you know, if you want to just write, um, and I think we've both written probably entire novels or close to it that have not been published. I've oh, written yeah. two. Um, uh, four. Oh, right. Okay. Um, you know, what's great about that experience is that you can have like, well, I'm going to have this one diversion that's, you know, a hundred pages long that's set 20 years separate <laughs> from all the other action and a different, you know, in first person and, or second person, let's do second person, you know, for those discarded books. Um, and then an editor is like, that is so great. I'm so glad you followed that, that, that journey. Now, can you please um, make this make sense with this actual story, right? Yeah. So it's just part of the process, part of the beauty of it all, right? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. um, if a movie studio bought one of your books, would you be able to turn over control of your characters? Yes, take them. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Yes, please. Take them. <laughs> Take them. Oh, hi, Paige. <laughs> and on that note. That was just, no, that was such a clear answer. And I loved that you were in like total thing. Okay, I have one more question selfishly that I would love to ask before we wrap up. So it's the start of summer reading. What are you two reading and or recommending? Mm -hmm. I got a bunch. Um, I, I'm recommending, uh, I'm recommending, um, girl, woman, other, which is just absolutely amazing. I just read it and it blew me away. Amazing. And also, uh, writers and lovers is one of my recent fave, oh, fave, faves. Oh, so, so good. That book is so and good. It probably has like 10. Well, I, I, do. I do. I do. You know, it's a professional <laughs> hazard. Um, Okay, yes. so these are all books that are coming, that are either just out or coming out in the next few weeks. Um, so the the book that I have read recently that just like made my hair go like this was um, the debut called Luster by a uh, woman oh. Raven Leilani, and it's it's a uh, it's it's like. It's like a Sally Rooney book if Sally Rooney mm -hmm. were a black woman in America. Like it's it's sexy, it's hilarious, it's dark, it's weird. Um, it's about love and friendship and sex and weird power dynamics. Um, but oh my God, I mean, it made me like, cackle with glee 
over and over again, like on every page, on every page, there would be some line where I was like, wow, look at that. I just, I just think it's so smart and so good. Um, then I also, I also just finished a book that comes out. I believe it's next week. That's a rom-com by a woman named Carrie Winfrey called not like the movies, not like in the movies, either not like the movies or not like in the movies. Um, that is like, it's like just like a sweet, very slow burn romance. Um, you know, I, I got, so my friend Jasmine Guillory, who's also on this list for me, um, she has a, a new book that just came out called Party of Two. And she has written five books. Courtney, get a load of this. Jasmine Guillory has written five books. I love that have been published in the last two and a half years. Two amazing. Years. Yes. How is that possible? It's I, amazing. How did you do that? I was here yesterday so and I was like, how? Please tell me. <laughs> um, yeah. But, but you know, when I read, started reading her books, I, this like world opened up to me of these contemporary rom-coms, which are, some of them are just so funny and so smart. Um, but then, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do one more. Um, this book is nonfiction. This is a memoir. Courtney, I think you would love this book. Okay. It's called The Fixed Stars by a woman named Molly Weisenberg. And <laughs> It's um so she's like a foodie person. She had like a food blog for a long time. Orange Jet. Orange Jet. I followed it for Orange Jet. Yes. Orange Jet. She's so great. She and her husband opened two restaurants together in Seattle. Um and then she had jury duty. She they had a like a two year old at the time. She had jury duty and she became like infatuated by one of the lawyers who was a woman hmm. and like, Oh, she like has a crush and it just, it completely changed her life. And, but the book is like, it's, it's also really about writing in the same way that like Sigrid Nunez's the friend is a lot about writing. Um, mm -hmm. Incredible. It's incredible. I just thought Interesting. it was Oh, I want to read that. Yeah. So those are those are mine. I could go on, but I will stop because it's eight to one. <laughs> Such good recommendations, and of course, we heartily recommend all adults here and friends and strangers. Ladies, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules. I'm really into this hotel room idea. Thank you for sharing you. that wisdom. Highly um, recommend it. Highly recommend it. <laughs> And thank you to everyone who joined us from Connecticut and afar. I know we have people from all over the states who are here, and we're really grateful for you being here. Everyone have a wonderful evening. Stay safe. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.